Uh, my name is Luke Dubois, and Tony's been talking to you. We're talking about a new piece called Lucid Possession that we've been working on for a few years. And the first thing we did together was to look at a piece of technology for her last film, which was called Spectropia. And what Tony wanted to do was to create a, a, a puppet that could use the Macintosh text-to-speech engine to um, make characters say things. So, so what we did was jacked into the Apple text-to-speech engine and created a video player that would call up frames of actors mouthing different phonemes in the English language. Tony calls them visemes. So they're these sort of little database files of footage. The idea is we could type anything and then the characters would say them, right, using Victoria High Quality or using one of the, um, you know, downloadable, like, capsule voices or something, and they would animate um, like a puppet. And we would shoot them with different expressions, so the different characters would have the kind of neutral face and the happy face and the angry face, and we could switch between them. And for Lucid Possession, we wanted to take that idea, um, these, these engines, and kind of update them so that they could be linked in with an actual live performer controlling them not by typing words, but by actually talking or singing. Um, rather than using individual frames for the phonemes, we used um, little short loops of video so that we could do um, some amplitude effects. So for like the vowels, we would film the actors with their mouths all the way closed, all the way open, things like that. But it's basically the same idea. But then we had to write this kind of analytics model at the front end to do speech recognition, to do phoneme recognition. And it's a combination of an analysis system based on um, something called male frequency capstone coefficients, MFCCs, which let me get kind of acoustic signatures of different um, vowels and consonants that each actor you know, provides. So uh, there's a set that's trained for Tony on her voice, there's a set that's trained for Hai Ting on her voice with the appropriate microphones. And then there's this um, galactically stupid neural net that maintains and learns based on a probability system so that over the course of us working with the software it gets better at predicting which um, successions of phonemes are, are, are viable or probable, right? So you would never go from a, a P sound directly into a G sound, directly into a K sound. So it knows to sort of discard that if it thinks that's what's happening and go to a fallback, right? Um, and so because we've been using it in production and rehearsal now for two years, without actually changing the code at all, it's alarmingly gotten better and better and better. And so it, it looks like a sort of eerie combination of the, the actual characters who were filmed, but also they're still puppets and they're still robots, so it's cinematic, but it's, not, it's still not quite right. And if you combine that with the way they're projected on stage, where they're on a robotic scrim, where they're on, they're sort of headless, appearing on a screen on the floor, floating in midair, um, it, makes the, it makes the representation of them quite uncanny in a lot of ways. So that was like one system of technology we developed. The other really big elaborate system that, that we've been working on is a system for interactive cinema, a playback and control engine that we've been working on for ages now. You know, underneath the hood, it's doing all the kind of things your friendly neighborhood VJ mixer would be able to do. Calls up clips of footage, lets you do stuff to them, projects them on the screen. Projects them on multiple screens if you really want to. It can do some simple projection mapping, it has a kind of database architecture, it has scenes, it can recall stuff, it can send DMX, it can send MIDI, it can control lights, it can cook your dinner, it can do whatever, <laughs> right? Where it differs is that rather than being um, an effects-centric model, it's a narrative-centric model. So um, instead of saying a preset is going to be all about these effects and this kind of LFO can change, changing the brightness and contrast curves and it's all in sync to the beat and you're sort of performing 
the processing of the video. In this case, what you're really performing, you're performing the playback of the video streams themselves. So you can shuttle them back and forth, you can jump around according to databases of little tiny loops. I think that's what makes it such a fluid engine. I think that's the most compelling part of the architecture is the ability to get at all those pieces at once. Um, so yeah, it's fun.